This is Josiah Plays Tyranny. All right, so here we are in the little house. Old Man Mua's house, and we're going to see what's in here. They won't see me coming. Anything sneaky sneak in here to find? Guess not. What do we have here? There is a list on old crumpled paper. While various simple items for crafting and repair are crossed out, most food items remain. Forget slow mode, he's no longer allowed to use his hands. Super slow. Yes, I'm completely playing with my face. I'm just pushing my face on the keyboard and mouse to play. So that's that's how we're doing this. All right, we've got forgebound iron ingots. These iron ingots bear the seal of the forgebound guild. Oh, here comes old man Mua. The old man barges in through the door behind you. You motherless whoremonger! He attempts to usher you away with the pointed end of his walking stick. Get out! I can just straight up kill him. I found forge-bound iron in one of these barrels. You have a great deal to explain, old man. The old man points his walking stick at your face. It's always the young pushing the old. I had no choice in the matter. Strange men appeared here a fortnight ago. They claim to be supporters of the Vendrian Guard, but I've never seen them before. He stamps his foot in a fit. I had no choice! These so-called freedom fighters threatened my life if I didn't comply. Villagers forcing you to help the Vendrian Guard? That sounds suspicious. Have you been listening to a damn thing I've been saying, or do you have shit for ears? Well, I've heard of shit for brains, but shit for ears is taken to a whole nother level. His face twitches as his spittle lands on you. Okay, could you quit spitting on me, dude? That's exactly what I was saying! I don't want any part of this foolish war! It seems like your stubborn ignorance may have saved you. I'm taking the iron. You may stay. The old man snatches your hands and shakes them with what little strength he has left. Thank you, Fatebinder! He was expecting me to kill him or something. Alright, I found the iron. Turned eyes to Tannis. Matani Sibyl was attempting to armor soldiers with the iron shipment the settlers found washed ashore. After defeating her, you managed to find the remaining iron inside one of the settlers' homes. Return to the disfavored camp and tell Isotanis the news. Thank you again for understanding the position I was put in. All right, we got a scroll and a bronze mace. Bronze mace. That funky mace. Hold on to the mace for a second. You know what? I'm not going to use the mace. And I've already, I already know this sigil, so that gets sold. The minute that his spit hit my armor, his head would have come off. What's up, Dak Fox 333? How you doing? Head would have come off the minute the spit hit your armor. Well, this playthrough, I'm playing a character who's more kind and and forgiving than that. But, in a future playthrough of this game, I will indeed be much, much more ruthless and cruel. And I will kill this motherfucker. Will do. I will kill his ass. Alright. That means it is now time... It is now time... To go back to camp. Finally. Back to camp. Anything else going on in this crazy, crazy town? Sorry, I can't. Yeah, you can. Anything else? Please don't hurt us. We'll probably come down to joining the chorus or death, won't can't we? Can't do that. Yeah, probably will. Probably will, buddy. He's, oh, he already said that before. We already talked to him. There's a great big world out there. Too big for my tastes. Can't do that. All right, I can't go in any of these other buildings or anything. So we're out of here. All right. First things first. 
back to the chorus camp for some training and to check and make sure there's nobody new there. Back for some training. We'll go to the secluded grove in a minute. But I want to get my training first. there's anything new going on here. No. Salveros and Bitter... Oh, that's different. Those guys weren't standing in those positions before. Hold on. Binary Tuxedo! How you doing? Cool name? Cool name? What's going on? Started watching. What's your character focusing on? Uh, magic. I'm making my main character kind of a healer, actually. Focus on healing for my main character. Healing and buffing, that sort of stuff. Uh, let's sell some shit. Like this, and 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 this. Wait, not that. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And this, and this, and this, and these. And this, and this, and this, and this. Look at all that money I just made. I'm rich. I'm rich. So you don't have anything new to say? Be gone, worm. That's a no. Two tooth. What about closet throat? Nothing new. What about two tooth? Is the is the kid dead? Is the dead kid here Can't somewhere? Can't do that. All right. Baz and. Homeboy. Okay. Reg, teach me. Teach me. Get some more lore going. Alright, I've got max lore training done. I don't know, Siren's just, uh, you know, she's got an attitude. I'm sure she'll be cool later. Magic Staff or Subterfuge. Subterfuge, baby. Let's train his lore. And Verse and Barrack are gonna train at the other Can't camp. do that. Let's see what uh, Salvaros and Bitterquip are up to. Where are my manners? I forgot to cast my incantation of crying like a coddled North girl over a few dead soldiers. The Blood Chanter pounds his staff to the ground, his sunburnt face twisting into a harsh scowl. I will not be lectured for a failure to show widow's weakness. Now, where is that? His vision snaps to you. Fate Binder! Let's see, what kind of voice did I do for Salveris? I don't even remember. Lord Binder, the disfavored soldier waves you closer. We've been waiting for you. One of Narat's dogs went wild. At least he's done the right thing to present himself here for a proper trial. I'd like to yank his teeth out, and I'd like it to be with your blessing, so I could sure use your judgment on this matter. We meet again, Binder! Bitterquip bows. The disfavored have accused me of multiple murders. I am not guilty of these charges and have nothing to hide. 
He grins from ear to ear. The truth can only exonerate me, so I will happily submit to your judgment. Hey, Spongy420. How far is this in? Not very far at all. I'm still in the first act of the game. Still in the first act. Let's see. Murder. Tell me everything. Murder. That's a serious charge. Tell me everything. Three weeks ago, we were in the eastern end of the valley. We were on assignment to keep Vendrian guard runners from leaving and reinforcements from coming in. Bitter Quip and some Scarlet Furies came with us for... His voice falls flat for an awkward pause. Support. Well, our trail puts us between two Vendrian guard patrols. Thinking they have us outnumbered, they draw bronze. We close ranks and fight together. It's a rather rousing melee, and the Oathbreakers give as good as they get. But among the dead, a dozen conscripts and two disfavored. Dance around the important details, Chanter. The soldier jabs a finger at Bitterquip. Right as the enemy spots us, you started working your mystic symbols. I saw panic in their eyes when we first stumbled onto each other in that clearing. But once his magic started flying, the only thing in their eyes was bloodlust. Oh, he used the fury spell on them. That's what the fucking disfavored guy's all bajiggity about right now. So, what sort of magic did you use? I don't talk the craft outside of the guild, but I can't defend myself with silence. The blood chanter clears his throat, measuring his words carefully. I invoked a spell of frenzy. Directed the chant at the enemy. They could move faster than your party and letting them escape would undermine the mission. So I fueled them with rage to get them to stand and fight. There, he just came right out and admitted it. The Oathbreakers usually can't fight their way out of a burlap sack, but he grants them the gift of a Stink Badger's courage. Oh uh, yeah, you don't want to fuck with a Stink Badger. Those Stink Badgers are well fucking known for their courage. I hear that phrase all the time. That guy's brave. He's courageous as a Stink Badger. You know what I'm saying? I hear it all the time. The warrior rests his head in his hand. Madness, pure and simple. The Furies were dumbfounded and folded, and that's when Devona and Sevius the Swift dove into the fray. Devona caught a javelin in the eye. Just stupidly bad luck. As for Sevius, after the battle, he had been run through 19 times. Raven Ash couldn't save him. Salvaros has his facts in order. I would concur with his assessment. Blood Chanter, is that all you have to say in your defense? What more need I say, for I have done no wrong. You daft, or was your mother too busy mounting the tears to teach you right from wrong? Wow. He just called out dude's mother. Was your mother too busy mounting the tears? Fuck. That would have been a busy woman. You are not enlightened, so I can forgive your ignorance. If you were illuminated in the ways of the arcane, you'd know that Kairos' law does not hold the mage culpable for that which cannot be controlled. What sort of chorus delusion is this? Oh, I can use my lore here. Bitequip is citing magician's folly. If in battle for Kairos' glory, a mage inadvertently harms someone, protected by Kairos' peace, the mage is not legally at fault. That's a fucked up law, actually. Mages can blast anybody they want, and it's cool. Only if you're in battle for Kairos' glory, though. Yeah, you know how I just fireballed all those people and killed them? I was fighting for Kairos' glory, though, so it's cool. Don't even trip. Kairos' glory, right? Hashtag Kairos' glory. Binary Tuxedo says, The disfavored couldn't defeat Berserking Oathbreakers? Weakness, pure and simple. I know, right? They deserve to die if they got killed by weak-ass Oathbreakers, right? Alright, Lord 20, let's go. Lord 20, blaze it. <laughs> the Fate Binder actually knows her law. As I said, I have no doubts that I am in the right. You must understand. The Chanter grins broadly. My heart is heavy with regards to this tragedy, but my conscience is clean. That's insane. This wasn't a gout of fire that went awry. He used his magic to enrage the enemy into feats of strength. How is that not a crime? Honest mistakes. Ready to pass judgment. 
Spend a decade mastering the craft of a magic, and perhaps you will understand why this law must exist. And why is that? So you illuminated folk can lord your knowledge over the rest of us, and excuse each other from reckless misuse? The warrior lets out a low grumble. You're all toying with things only Kairos understands. Nothing good comes of mages. You gripe, but if this law didn't exist, I could argue that Graven Ash hasn't been protecting the Scarlet Chorus from harm the way he has the disfavored, and I could demand to non punish such misuse of magic. But the law does exist, so I do not. That seems kind of sketchy, but let's go with it. I am ready to pass judgment. The case is a simple one, is it not? So do you think he's guilty? Wrong question! It's not what the fate binder feels, it's what the law says. He clears his throat with a smug smile. <clears throat> so then, what does the law say? Uh, Kairos Law shields Bitter Quip from negligence in battle. The man is trained and is ab obviously acted with magic, knowing the thing would shield you. You suck. The law is meant to protect mages. This is not such a case. The sentence is death. I can just sentence Bitter Quip to death right now. No, I'm gonna side with Bitter Quip. Kairos' law shields Bitter Quip from negligence in battle. The matter is tragic, but not criminal. Tunon also liked that. And the Scarlet Chorus. Oh, I'm up to level 2 with the Scarlet Chorus finally. Of course, the dis Disfavorite didn't like it. The Blood Chanter grins, smug. He tips his head to you in thanks before flicking the Disfavorite soldier an obscene gesture. And I don't think Salvaros liked that very much. See, every time I come back to these camps, I find new little little conversations and situations to deal with. Which is pretty cool. And I'll bet most people that played through this... Wait. Oh, this is different. Death Knell never said this before. Did I finally hit level 4? Actually, Photon Joker, I hit level 5. I am fucking zooming through this shit. Well, well. The soldier looks you up and down with a mischievous grin. I recognize the Fate Binder of Tunon when I see her. Not quite what I was expecting, but impressive nonetheless. Seems you're making a name for yourself in camp. She bows. Death now, Scarlet Fury at your service. I know Death now. We've already met and talked extensively about stuff. She already forgot that I met her. She points a long finger at you. Know this before you let it get to your head. I only kill interesting foes. The ones on the battlefield who call themselves out with storied weapons or fancy standards. You might think twice before making yourself stand out. She smirks. You might just get the wrong kind of attention. Plus, we've got enough useless twats dying for the Overlord's good cause it is as it is. All our horde recruits seem good for is piling as a tripping hazard to those of us having a proper bit of carnage sport. The Fury effortlessly spins a bronze sword about in her hand. Either they need to learn to fight or we need to toughen our recruitment standards. Again. Piling as a tripping hazard. That's pretty bad. Now what do you need? We've already talked about all this stuff. Okay, hold on. Salvaros, are you happy? He's not happy. He nods curtly, his greeting little more than a grunt. Fatebinder. Oh, he doesn't have anything new to say, though, even after I ruled against him. Okay. Alright, I think I'm done here. Two, two, oh, here's Bitter Quip again. I can't even talk to Bitter Quip anymore. He's just like, you know what, I'm done with you. Yeah, we've already talked to the Beastman, we've already talked to Siren, we've already talked to Sting of the Dagos. We're out of here. We're out of here. We're gonna go back to the other camp and train now. Back to the other camp and train now. Train now! Josiah puts game on fast mode. Biggest irony. <laughs> right, Le, Le Quebec? Totally the biggest irony. I'm playing on fast mode, which is why it's taking me 24 hours to go through Act 1. Alright, back to the disfavored cam. Let's do this. Well, Pillars of Eternity took me 250 hours. That is how slow I go through these games. Alright. 
All right, here we go. Sterling Hagnon, what do you got going on? If this were slow mode, he'd still be in character creation. Character creation itself took me two hours, I think, with the with the the conquest mode and everything. All right, let's look around. Let's see if anybody has anything. Oh, there is something new going on. See, there's always new stuff going on. Take another step and we will be forced to act. What's happening here? I'm just leaving with what is mine. I haven't done anything wrong. What is this horde guy doing? What's going on here? We've got this handled, Fatebinder. I don't think you do. I think I'm going to meddle in what you've got going on here. I'll take that under advisement. Now, I'll just be leaving. No need to trouble you folks further. Surrounded by a quartet of disfavored soldiers that have him physically boxed in, a Scarlet Chorus warrior clutches a disfavored helmet. Visibly pale and sweating, he wears a trembling grin. Come, lad. No need to be so tetchy. Oh, you can leave, but that helmet stays. A soldier steps closer, her bulk crowding the choirmen. We don't take kindly to iron thieves, so if you think you can just stroll out of here without a flogging, you are sorely mistaken. Something wrong? One of the disfavored soldiers turns to you, looking weary from debate. This one here stole from the Legion and thinks he can get away with it. She points to the chorus warrior clutching the helmet. If he takes one more step, we'll be forced to violate Kairos' peace. How to summon the Fate Binder? We've got this handled, Fate Binder. I know, right? As soon as you say that to me, I'm like, oh hell no, you don't. Fate Binder, can you hear me out? I'm being accosted by these disfavored thugs. On a, on pawn noticing verse, he blinks and regards her with a respectful nod. Don't make the com Fate Binder complicit in your theft. Dis disfavored honor is the disfavored armor, not honor. Disfavored armor is the property of the Legion. It's not yours to loot, and by Graven Ash, I will cut you down if you even try to leave with that relic. Hmm. Trying to pass judgment on another Archon's vassal locked in case that I get involved. Kairos Pete being violated, this involves me whether you like it or not. Hmm. Someone mentioned Kairos's peace being violated. This involves me whether you like it or not. The disfavored warriors trade glances between each other in silence. None of them back away from the choirmen. We can make this a trial of who stands here the longest. And when our bladders loosen, at least I won't be the one wearing an iron diaper. But I'd much rather let the fate binder settle it, seeing as how there's no other way out of this impasse. Enough! The disfavored warrior rears back a bald fist before hesitating, sensing her lapse and awkwardly returning her hand to her side. The choice is to adjudicate her fight. Then I, too, will abide by the Fate Binder's decree. Ask if you can flog him yourself. That does sound exciting, Anonymous. Start from the beginning. What's your argument here? May I see that helmet? He just gave me the helmet. He gives you a long, quiet nod before thrusting the helmet into your hands. Fine, but give it back when you're done with it. I'll inspect the helmet. I'm keeping this nice. Battered and corroded, the helmet is chipping along the left parietal and rust blossoming all about. It's likely been separated from anyone who knows the first thing about maintaining iron equipment for many weeks. While few could sense slight difference in weight, this seemingly standard issue stone shield helmet is a superior piece. Not as ornate as the helmets made for the iron guard, this is nonetheless a rare piece of forge work. The type reserved for commanders and veterans of 30 or more years. Give it to the disfavored. Alright, I'll give back the helmet. Fireman snatches the helmet, quickly wrapping it in his arms, hiding it from the disfavored crowding around him. To the choirman, I say, start from the beginning. You got it, boss. So, Death Nell and her gang are round in the river, looking for a fight. We hear commotion, we hear scout whistles, we run to see what's going on. Next thing we know, we're on top of some Vendrian guard. They had just clobbered another gang that was in the area. We had no idea another patrol was out. Anyway, the Oathbreakers were high off their victory and stood their ground when we rushed them. Their mistake, right? 
Long story short, the fight got out of hand and there wasn't much left to recruit into our gang, so we helped ourselves to their gear. That's when I found this little piece of work. He rubs his hand across the blue surface of the helmet. The disfavored soldiers wince at the gesture. Thought I'd do the proper thing and offer to sell it back to the disfavored. So I made the hike over here and rather than claiming my finder's fee, I got accosted. I'll ask Verse. What do you think of his story? It checks out. The disfavored treat their armor like a second skin. Some of them even sleep in it. He shudders. Then again, some of them don't have a choice. She smirks up at Barrack. Fucking shit smelling Barrack. If the Legion soldiers want to get themselves whipped up in an emotional frenzy over cold iron, that's their problem. This fighter claimed fair spoils from the enemy. The helmet ought to be his, unless someone stronger steps forward to take it. He smiles and cracks her knuckles. Hmm. How can you prove that you claimed the helmet from the enemy and didn't steal it from the Quartermaster? Well, if you want this dispute to stretch on for the next fortnight, I can gather the statements from every member of my gang who witnessed the battle. But something tells me that none of us have time to bicker over the details. She sighs. That won't be necessary. We don't dispute how the iron fell into his hands anyway, and I'm sure we have more important matters to occupy our attention during the siege. Instead of selling the helm back to the disfavored, why not keep it for yourself? Uh, first off, the helmet fits me about as well as a bucket over an apple. Fucking tearsmen, lousing up our iron. Keep testing me and I'll use this as a mobile latrine. <laughs> That'd be amazing if he just fucking whipped out his dick and pissed in the helmet. Here you go, you can have it back. He shakes his head at the soldiers, waiting for their protest to die down. As I was saying, the helmet fits me poorly and I'd rather have the rings to barter for a better blade. Besides, it seems in poor taste to wear disfavored colors. You're opposed to simply returning this to your disfavored allies. But Kairos of Nethers! What have the disfavored ever done for us to earn my charity? Until the voices of the rat start to chant commanding us to share with Ash's cupbearers, they won't see any undeserved kindness from the likes of me. You should sell us what is ours and call that charity? Repugnant sod. We came to the tears on a mission to civilize this realm, but you hill folk can't learn honor unless it's beaten into you. Hill folk. Wow. Uh, Commissar? What's up, Commissar? How you doing? Did anyone figure out how to remove ability spells from action bar? Yes. If you hover over the ability in your action bar with your mouse and while hovering over it hit the delete key on your keyboard it will clear the slot i don't know about any respec options in fact actually i'm pretty certain there's no respec options because i think the developers said there's not in one of the streams so i think there's no respecs anything else to say that might help your case his mouth twists into a pensive scowl well, unlike my peers here, who some I'm unwilling to share, if I'm allowed to sell this, I'd of course tie it to the court. Like a proper ally. Oh, he'd give me some money, huh? Shameless cur. If Bledded Mark were in your shot, he'd have your tongue for insulting the court. Anything else to say that might- Oh, I just asked him that. I have further questions. I expect you would. Ask away, Fatebinder. All right, I'll talk to the disfavored now. What's your argument here? It's a disfavored helmet, and therefore it belongs to the Legion. What else needs to be said? The warrior shrugs, looking to her comrades. I know the chorus are routinely undersupplied, but we're not to blame for their lack of resourcefulness. They recruit too many to arm and feed, and we suffer for their slack. So when this fucker shows up trying to sell one of our helmets back to us, well, you could say me and the band were a bit insulted. Though she addresses you, her gaze stays locked on the choirman. I don't want to make this more of a problem than it already is. The chorus rat is free to return the helmet, with our gratitude, and never come back. No problem, Commissar. Good luck with that. Yeah, I tried everything, but the only reason I knew it was delete is because they told somebody how to do it on one of the streams I watched before. 
It's the only reason I knew. Anyway, have a good one, Commissar. Have fun. See you later. I'll never come back. I'm going to ask Barrick. Any thoughts? The big soldier clears his throat and stands tall before his countrymen. Traditionally, iron of weapons and arms go to the Legion. It's only practical. We are the more suited to wield them. And as true northerners, we can be trusted with the finest items of the forge. The chorus is packed full of former enemies. The untrustworthy, ungrateful sons and daughters of fallen realms. Half of them will die in their first battle, and the rest will defect back to their homelands at the first opportunity. Arming them is a waste of effort. He makes a dismissive wave to the choirmen. Let them sharpen tree branches or boat hooks. Save the elite gear for the elite soldiers. That is our way. But well, why don't you be really humble about it, Beric? That's cool. It's never enough that we bend the knee and pledge our lives to Kairos, is it? We need to constantly prove ourselves to you ironclad dimwits and get nothing for our trouble. Burst does not like Beric and the ironclad and the and the disfavored. I'm sure there's an extra helmet or two in camp. Why pick a fight over this one? We're not just talking about one helmet here, Binder. It's the principle. The precedent. Graven Ash demands that we honor and preserve our relics of battle. That helmet belongs on a legionnaire's head, or on the hearth of that warrior's next of kin. Sounds like the one at fault was the warrior who died in battle and let the enemy seize his helmet. He's got a point there. The warrior shrugs with a wry smile. Don't blame me for your backwards northern traditions. Stone Shield. See this? What are we to make of such blatant disrespect? Just because we are allies doesn't mean we should suffer someone whose sole intent is to enrage and offend. Did you offer him anything else in exchange? The disfavored soldier stares at you blankly. Take that as a no. An exchange would be as insulting to the Legion as a transaction of rings. Even more so. Every piece of equipment here is intended for Grave and Ash's Northern Legion. Not the rabble who squat and wrestle for the voice's delight. Nobody offered, but the only off iron I seek is in the form of rings. Take it or leave it. Anything else to say that might help your case? Well, I think it's worth noting that we haven't touched a hair on his head. I'm not saying that we won't bash his face in for the insult and presumption he threw in ours, but up to this point we've shown incredible restraint. Aren't they a generous bunch? I have further questions. Be my guest. Let's done with this annoyance sooner rather than later. Actually, I'm ready to make my ruling. Execute them all. Yes, I order you all executed. <laughs> They'd be like, what? <laughs> well, you did say you'd abide by my judgment. The disfavored warriors turn to you, waiting for your next words. All right, pay him for the helmet or let him leave. Sell the helmet for a copper, no more or less, and we'll call the battles settled. The helmet is a legion relic and stays with the disfavored. Well, again, I don't give a fuck about the disfavored. I don't like the disfavored, so I'm not going to side with them. Uh, this is the most fair, probably. It, it doesn't really piss off either side, particularly. This one pisses off the disfavored a little bit and makes the Scarlet Chorus like you more. I'm gonna go with number one. He did find it fair and square in battle. The other warrior shouldn't have died and lost his fucking helmet. It's his own damn fault. If you get killed in battle and lose your shit, and somebody else then defeats the person who killed you and takes that shit, it is their loot fair and square, as far as I'm concerned. Pay the man a fair price for the helmet, or let him leave. Hudan liked that. Disfavored did not like it so much. A long growl rumbles under the disfavored warrior's helmet as she measures her words. This isn't our way, Fatebinder. Apparently I expected too much of you to keep our traditions far from home. Motherfucker, I am not here to keep your traditions. I am here to keep Kairos' fucking law, which is greater than sign, greater than sign, greater than sign, your fucking traditions. So your fucking traditions... Can suck it. That's what I have to say to the fucking disfavored. 
A smile splits his face from ear to ear. I'll accept an iron ring for an iron helmet. Eh? Any takers? Otherwise, I can try my luck elsewhere. Maybe someone in my gang needs a spittoon. <laughs> Maybe someone in my gang needs a spittoon or a trowel for digging ditches. Oh, he's just rubbing it in their faces now. We're gonna use your relic of battle as a fucking spittoon. Oh, this guy's got jokes. This guy's got jokes. Take it! With a flick of her wrist, the warrior flings an iron ring at the choirman, pelting him square in the chest with the payment. When he reaches to pass through the helmet, she jerks it violently out of his hand and glares. And this is my cue to leave. He nods to you. Have a pleasant siege, Fate Finder. I love, I love ruling in these little disputes. It's so much fun. Because the people always get so fucking mad when you don't, when you don't rule with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody thinks they're right, and they just assume... You're going to be on their side. And then you rule against them and they get all fucking pissy about it. It's fucking hilarious. Alright, what's up, Stone Shield? And here's the rest of my party. Okay, cool. So I love finding all these new little conversations and conundrums and situations every time I come back to these camps. It's so Sorry, good. I can't. So good. Fatebinder, the Archons are in the war tent. Yeah, I don't care. I'm not trying to talk to the Archons right now. Um, Got anything for me here? Mm, nope. Do I have anything to sell? Nope. Okay. Uh, we had this talk. Talking about the quest or the election? Well, I don't want to talk about the election. The election is just fucking depressing. Keep an eye on those Scarlet Chorus over there. There's a bunch of Earthshakers around. Oh, ever since I went and rescued the Earthshakers, now there's a bunch of Earthshakers here in the camp. See, I love little details like that, where they actually think about it and change the camp to fit the things that have actually happened. Because all these Earthshakers weren't here before. And now they are. And there's Hellspar. Let's see if Sevius has anything new to say. He doesn't. Iron Marshal? Doesn't. Okay, anybody else new around here? Stone Shield, uh, Crescent Runner. Okay, let's go turn in the iron. Actually, no. Let's go train first before we turn in any quests. Let's go train. Exactly like you've described. Wonder if you get to wear iron if you have enough rep. Oh, favor two. Lucia has something new to say. I don't know why, but that's what I heard. Makes you wonder about the Fate Binder's loyalties. Are Tunan and the voices can. Greetings, Fate Binder. Marcus calls over Lucia. I see you've returned. What can we do for you? I need to train. Alright, let's see. He does parry, which is what I want to train Barrack in. And she does dodge, which is what I want to train Burris in. Holy cools. You know, there was a couple of things that I couldn't talk to Lucia and Marcus about before because I didn't have enough rep. And now I think I probably do have enough rep. So, let's see. Now, it wasn't tell me about yourself. You seem handy with a weapon, Lucia. Oh yeah, this is new. She didn't say this before. I'm handy in lots of ways, believe me. She winks. Weapons, though. Hey, you could say I know what I'm doing. Lucia, are you flirting with Tunan's fate binder? Relax, Marcus. There are plenty of camp slaves if I ever need to scratch an itch. Although... Through the visors of her helm, you notice Lucia's eyes roving up and down your body. If you ever need someone to warm your bedroom, let me know. I sleep in my armor. Hope you don't mind. So do I, but you don't hear me bragging about it. Yeah, that's because you're nasty and covered with shit, Barrack. Shut up. Um. Ah, and he didn't say this before either, because I didn't have the favor. 
Every battle is a reminder of the Legion's superiority. The Oathbreakers have plenty of heart, but nothing to beat our northern values and Grave and Ash's love. If you ever want to enjoy that feeling, I can spare you the time of day to cross iron. Um... Oh, I still don't have enough reputation to ask about the disfavored thing. Okay. Uh, we know about this already, so we're done here. Alright, now that we've done our training... Now that we've done our training... Let's come over here. Let's turn in the iron quest to this guy. Let's look and see if there's any other new people in the camp. You have to revisit every NPC in the game each time you ding a level. Of, well, not every NPC. Just the ones that I specifically remember having dialogue that said I had insufficient reputation for. Which was those two, actually, was the only ones, really. Move along, Binder. Nobody here needing your excuse for justice. Oh, cry more. Word travels fast, Fate Binder. Are you guys all mad at me now? Because I ruled I against you multiple times that. in all can't sorts of that. situations. Oh, you can do that. Alright, Isotanus. Let's do this, Isotoner. Have you found the iron yet? Isotanus gives you a look full of expectation. I can lie and keep the iron, huh? Leaden Mark won't like that. Here it is. Good thing the Oathbreakers didn't get their hands on much. A thousand rings! Holy shit! I'm rich and disfavored like that, which is nice. I can't tell you what it means to have this back in our hands. We'll make sure to tell my superior about what you've done for the Legion. Need something else. I'd like to see a Waz. Let's see, does he have anything I wanna I wanna look into buying? Not really, no. Not really. Okay. Quest complete. You, you return the shipment to Isotanus in the Disfavored Camp. So we're just... We just need to do... Return to Ash's Tent, which we're not going to do until after we go meet with Tarkas Ari at the secret location. So I think it's time to go meet with Tarkas Ari in the secret location. Which is something brand new that I've never seen in any... Of, actually, I've found a lot of things in Act 1 that I didn't see in any of the streams. Hidden areas with loot conversations, people to talk to, lots of things that nobody else seemed to ever find. Because they basically all pretty much just rushed through. I mean, compared to me, even a person taking fucking 18 hours to go through this rushed through. <laughs> Alright. Oh, she's about to level up again. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I am talking about. His favorite aren't bad, says Nox. Is that right, Nox? Here comes the money. Look how much money I have. I have a lot. A lot. Alright. Secluded Grove time. Here we go. They're true Aryans. Yeah, yeah. I better do a hard save here. So let's go see a completely new area that nobody else in any of the other streams ever went to, because they didn't side with the rebels. Tarkas already gave you the location of this secluded stretch of wilderness where you may meet in private. Eight hours. Let's do it. None of them have talked about torturing livestock. That's true. Only Verus has talked about that. And this seems like a lovely place. This tree still smolders from the unquenched embers beneath the ground, no doubt due to chorus efforts to render the land unfarmable. Huh? Baitbinder, Tarkasari is just a hand. Follow me. Now yeah, following you. Hold on. There's a shield here. A bronze tower shield. Is it any good? It is not good for her. Look at her dodge. It's a hundred. It's a motherfucking hundred. Look at his parry. It's a hundred and nine. Amazing. Amazing.
Verse is pretty messed up. Yeah, Verse is a fucking straight up psychopath. Can you just not take Verse with you, or will her boss insist you take the litter rat? Right now, at this point in the game, I, I can't get rid of anyone. I can't get I can't kick anyone out of my party. At your service, Fade. But what do you need? At, at the moment. What did you have in mind? But later, once I get more companions ahead, and once Fade I get on. my t spires and all that, then I can kick people out and take who I want. But right now, I'm stuck with these people. You got it. I think. I haven't seen any way to get rid of them. Let's see what's over here. It's a deer. There's gonna be loot over here. You know there's gonna be loot. You know there's gonna be loot. It's gonna be, gonna be, Sorry, gonna be, gonna be. You know there's gonna be loot. And deers. There's a lot of deers. Included grove of loot. No, there's gonna be loot. I just found some loot. Here we go. Here we go with the loot. Stone shield, tower shield. Does anybody want to use that? No. Uh oh. Plus seven endurance over what he's got, but you lose the survivor thing. So I would say, no. Sorry, I can't. Nice little pond here. What time is it? Like in the game, what time is it? I don't know, it won't tell me. Uh Sun Soldier's Shield. They're definitely not gonna use this. No. No, they are not. Lots of shields. Have I found three shields on this map? This is the fucking map of shields. For some reason. Loot is another shield. No, it's a lesser healing potion. You know there's gonna be loot. You know there's gonna be loot. I just found, I just found, I just found some loot. That's the, that's the loot song. Not a very good song. I'm, I'm willing to admit that right now. I'm willing to admit that it's a terrible song. Frankly, one of the worst songs I've ever heard. You already have Loyal B3 with her with Verse? I think so. Let's see. With Verse, I have... Yeah, I'm almost a four, in fact. And I've got three Fear with her. Beric, I've got three, and almost three. Lantry, I've got almost four, and barely any fear. Ab, I've almost got four, and she's not even in my party yet. And almost three fear. Siren, I have no fear and a little bit of loyalty with, and she's also not in my party. Okay, there's all the people. Wow, the whole team is here. Sybil, Tarkas Ari, the Pelax Florian, Ebb, all the fucking, basically every rebel I've met that had a specific name is here. Is this another shield? No, it's a blood moss. I love how I'm just keeping them waiting while I run around and loot stuff on the map. Can't do They're that. just watching me, they're like, what the fuck are they doing? <gasps> Hidden shit! Is it another shield? It is another shield! What? <laughs> Why another sh Why so many shields here? This wagon appears to have been used as a makeshift shelter from volleys of arrows. It wasn't entirely successful, judging from the bloodstains that trail away from the wagon. What's up, Archer? Archer. Like Sterling Archer? Okay, it's time. It's time to have a chat with all damn rebels. And before having the option to nuke them all. You get an Archon minion? Yes, you do get an Archon minion. Gotta be prepared for- That would be hilarious if they just jumped me, and I had to fight them all right now. And they're like, psych! 
You thought we were going to let you join us? Let us speak, Fatebinder. Well, since she wants to talk to me, I'm going to try to talk to everyone else first. What's up, Matani Sybil? Turkus Ari is waiting. I suggest you speak with her. Eb won't talk to me right now. Halox Florian. Pleased to see you again, Fatebinder. I owe you one. All right, let's talk to Tarkus Ari. Here we go. This is the first time we've met her, but we did get a missive from her earlier. Put on my diplomat face. Yeah, it's time to be hella diplomatic. Before you stands Captain Tarkus Ari, de facto leader of the dwindling Vendrian Guard. Short, sunburned, and agitated even when standing still, her body is a compact sculpture of muscle and bone. That's, that's evocative writing. Compact sculpture. And her face is short on symmetry, thanks to the scars and dents of a dozen brushes with death. So she kind of sounds like a badass. Why you grant an audience to this one mystifies me, Fatebinder. Shut the fuck up, shit-stinking Kana. We should be running these Oathbreakers through and parading their ruined bodies about the battlefield. And you should be shutting your mouth, Beric. I'll tell you when it's time for you to talk. Harsh, but I like it. You have my permission to stop the negotiations in favor of Beric's plan any time now. Okay, you know it's bad when Verse and Beric agree. You know things are really bad when the two of them agree on a plan against me. Alright, uh, no. Not subtly. Calm down, we're not here to start a fight. Got a little fear. Got some favor with Vendrian Guard. I'm at four with them. Darkus Ari says Peacebinder. So we know about the Peacebinder thing. I knew that Peacebinder thing was going to come in handy. Thank you for accepting my summons. She points to a tattered swath of blue fabric hanging from her belt. The one tailor amongst us was too busy mending armor. I apologize for the tear's most underwhelming blue flag. In major favor. I'm just going to glare silently through this whole diplomatic thing. No, not really. I am Captain Tarkus Ari of the Vendrian Guard. Fatebinder, you may work for the enemy, but your actions are tinged with honor, mercy, and even a shred of respect for the tears. After much debate, we agreed that we should take the risk and meet you in person. I'll be impressed if this is some clever ruse. Less so if we truly mean to steer our loyalties away from the two indomitable armies that support us, and, more importantly, pay well. Army ship, verse... In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I offer and request a delay of blade. I can attack? <laughs> I can be like, thanks for gathering in one place for me and attack them. That would be amazing. But I'm not going to do that. All right. Uh, let's see, I want a part of this. Surrender and make it easy on yourselves. I hear your words. Spare the formalities. I'm going to be, I'm going to get in with the formalities. I like the formalities. I'm a diplomat. As Fatebinder of Tunon, an emissary of Kairos, I will hear your words. Thank you. As reigning captain of the Vendrian Guard, first among equals, I am honored to have this opportunity to speak. Our little stand is nearing its end. Had we been taking wagers, I'd have given us two weeks at best. Miraculously, we have lasted two span. Though I doubt Kairos's historians will mention these details, no doubt the record will describe us as a footnote. But we never assumed we'd successfully carve our own free realm out of Kairos's claim. We're brave, not stupid. No, we did this knowing we'd all perish, but in doing so, set an example that might catch on like wildfire. 
The captain clears her throat, turning red as she speaks. However, now we have a chance, a chance to send our message of resistance throughout the tears. You are the missing thread in our tapestry. Actually, it would have been a brilliant plan, Knox. If I had manipulated the rebels this whole time by pretending to be their ally, just so I could gather them here and kill them, just so I could solve the edict thing without having to rely on the fucking two factions to stop dicking around, that would actually be super fucking brilliant. That would be some straight up Machiavellian level 100 shit right there. Was being captured a part of your plan? Uh, let's see. Uh, so, I'm not going to be sassy, because I actually do like the Rebels. How exactly can I help? We know of Kairos' edict, and we know it to be a death sentence hovering over all currently sealed in the Vendrian's Well Valley. I wonder how they could have picked up that information. Barrett crosses his arms and balls his hands into fists. What sort of idiot told the enemy details they didn't need to know? Oh, right. It was you. Oh, you're gonna be fucking sarcastic with me now, huh, Beric? Man, listen. Which one of us smells like shit all the time? Is it me or you? Me or you? Oh, it's you? Okay, then you should shut up. You smell like shit. Your argument is invalid. You do not have to attack the keep. Actually, in this... Oh, if you kill them here, do you not... That would be so cool, but I doubt it makes you skip that whole fucking scene. Something else probably happens, even if you kill them here. And we've since learned two important details. We know Ascension Hall must be taken by an agent of Kairos, and we know all in the valley will perish if this doesn't happen. She shakes her head, turning pale as she does. We were right to fear the Overlord. If Kairos' armies kill us, we die. If we kill Kairos' armies... We die. Charming dilemma we've been given. Yeah, that kind of sucks for them, doesn't it? Alright, chance to rescind her and ruined it. Don't invite me here if you didn't have a plan. Remain silent. Archons bicker over war plans. Killing anyone by way of their competence. I like that. So you subterfuge. Agent of Kairos declaims Ascension Hall. Use lore. Alright, I'm going for lore. I've had plenty of time to ponder this edict. So long as an agent of Kairos claims Ascension Hall, we're safe. That agent could be me. What happens if you lie about the edict? Yeah, who knows? Well, maybe if you lie about the edict to Eb, you never even get the missive. I mean, you might have to do every single pro-rebels thing in order to even get the missive to join the rebels. If you, if you fuck with them at any point, then they might not ever even invite you to this meeting. But I don't know. There's really no way of knowing without playing through it again and doing different stuff. And that's why this game has great replay value. Alright, let's go lore. That agent could be me. Gain some lore experience. Yup. Well, Ari blushes, coughing into her hand as she looks away. Yes, that's pretty close to what we had in mind, actually. I don't know how to do Eb's voice. I'm trying to remember how she sounds. And it's I don't know how to make her sound different from verse and different from everyone else. How did she sound? Told you this one was smarter than the average soldier. Our plan is this. The captain takes a deep breath and straightens her posture. We want you to take Ascension Hall. We will serve... She coughs, tripping on her words. We will serve as your warriors. And then, under your command, we would secure Ascension Hall in your name. He's a pretty tough person doing a sailor impression. <laughs> yeah. Or so that's our foolish notion. Ab interrupts with a hollow laugh. What say you, Fatebinder? You proclaimed this edict. You are more an expert in the Overlord's logic. Will this work? Hmm. Why should I help? Kairos magic is unknowable. I can bluff. I'll tell you for a fact it won't work. It should work. 
I just proclaimed the edict. The Overlord does not share such secrets and details with me. Attack! I've heard enough! Um... Kairos' magic is unknowable, but this sounds like a better plan than nothing. Considering the certainty of our doom, I'll take any port. She lets out a long sigh as she turns to look at her comrades. Like one of the singers of ABBA. <laughs> nice, Anonymous. Okay, well we will continue this conversation. This interesting meeting with the rebels. In our next episode. If you're watching my stream, I am not stopping. I am not done playing. I'm going to play for at least a couple more hours. But I do need to take a super fast break. If you're watching on YouTube, that's going to be the end of this episode. So thanks for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Tyranny.